Guys, welcome to Wikipedia After Dark. Uh, this is uh, wiki, 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 wiki. Kevin Sanchez, Joshua Pallad, Jonathan Kaplan. Thank you for joining us. Um, oh, yeah, today we're going to do uh, Rainer Maria Rilke. We're going to talk about Rainer Maria Rilke, one of my favorite poets of all time. I actually feel like I, um, in my life, I took his advice. But the reason I did was because I was like super lonely for a, for a long time. And part of the things that he talked about were like um, being friends with your solitude. Like the, the world, no matter what, is a lonely place and you're not gonna be able to truly, even when you're connected with someone, can't really actually connect with them. So it's like, and you know, in, in times what? of like- I mean, you're making me a fan of him. <laughs> <laughs> he has he has other shit, but I would I I want you to be as critical as you can. Um, I just well, Josh asked Alexa about him, mm -hmm. uh, or her. I'm not sure yet. He, he, well, first of all, his middle name is Maria. Yes. Did 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 Alexa check Wikipedia? I don't know. I just what asked her who he was, but. Yeah. She Alexa described him as mystical, mm. and it reminded me of my favorite poet, who I Mr. Mr. Cow, Mr. Cow, Cow Robert. <laughs> <laughs> some of his poetry. He starts off with, "I came here with my dick in my hand." <laughs> you do know Mr. Cow's in jail for rape, right? Don't make me leave here with my foot in your ass. Be cool. Don't be worried about how I'm ripping this shit when I'm flipping what I'm fucking, nigga. <laughs> That's just what I do. I'm effervescent. First of all, the fact that effervescent is in this song is <laughs> so yeah. mystical. It and I'm off that crescent. Nastier than a full-grown German shepherd motherfucker keeps stepping. German shepherd, see, that's a callback to Maria. They don't fuck with me and they don't. I don't even know what that means. They don't fuck with me and they don't. Y'all bitches can catch me and y'all won't. Pay y'all fair, fix your hair, throw that pussy, got a powder in a boona powder list, and a donna hand, a buy a coosie. I don't know, I don't read the Ooh. rest of that shit. Ooh. Well, actually, like, very good. Beautiful, beautiful work. I mean, so I want to just compare your favorite yeah. poetry. No, I think that mystical and actually, you know, one of the things about Mystical's work is like, it's very like empowering. Sometimes I feel like when I listen to Mystical, I feel like, yeah, you know what? I don't have to worry about all those bitches. I can just do me. I can like, I'm I'm important. Yes, you're important. And also Mystical, like when you read, when I read that, I think to myself, you know, this guy seems like he wants to invite people in, but he just can't seem to to like share a commonality, a commonality with them. Mystical or or or, or, <laughs> or this which poet? Oh, mystical oh, oh. and well, and, well, I think it's the universal. I think whenever you write poetry, you're writing to the 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 person inside of you, who has no one to talk to, and so all poetry does have this sort of like reflexive energy. Poetry is comedy with no punchline. Mm, well, you know, it's funny. This is a good point because like, I, I don't know if I told you guys this, but like before I was in a band. You I were in a band? Did. Yes. I, Holy shit. I don't know that we, I don't know if we've really gone into it on the show, but we can save that for another time. But before I was in a band, I was actually a poet. Mm, really? Yes. I actually was published twice. Uh, <laughs> Well, we did talk about poetry, now I'm remembering, but very early on in Low End Gigolos. No, but so like you guys are like uh, like a comedian with no punchline, but like like almost like guiltily, I'm like, I was that guy. You know? Yeah, but John, you don't remember what happened to me? From when? No. I We talked about this, very, this is two years ago. I, I submitted when I was like probably 17, 18, 19, I don't know, early to, uh, 
the poetry.com to some contest and they sent me some shit that I made it into a book and they wanted me to like order. Oh, I remember of- that. Damn, that is true. Holy shit. I forgot about that. Yeah. And, were- and I got all gassed up and I was like, oh my God, I'm a real poet now. <laughs> no, we're, you and I are both real poets. My Kevin God. is the only. Hey one guys. Who- oh, I did real poetry. I was a rapper. Okay. Oh, that's true. Okay. Yeah. I was a great rapper. In my day, what was your rap name? Uh, I had a bu- I, have a, I had a bunch. I had uh, Evil Schemes. <laughs> evil Schemes is one of them. How did you spell it? You you know exactly how I spelled that shit with a Z at the end. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, did you spell it S C E M E Z or S K E M? S K E M Z. No, 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 no. I spelled it right until the Z part. Until the Z. Wow. So, so um, if you were looking at it drunk, you would say schemes. <laughs> Sounds uh, like a I, I, I was also um, Knoxville, oh, just because I like the name Knoxville. Yeah, I Johnny like, Knoxville. I like white. Tra- <laughs> like, me and white trash were synonymous. Like, I love white trash culture. Yeah, and um, and then my first one was Kells because obvious hacky reasons. You know what's funny is that like I can see because like you were a big Eminem. Were you a big Eminem fan at the time? Of Big so Knoxville is really like a homage name. Really? Yeah, because he's like so backwoods. Oh, I wasn't even thinking about. It. I was thinking of Jackass. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville. Like, I wanted to be, but it, it did have a little bit to do with Eminem because I wanted to be. I, I I didn't want to sing about like making yeah. money when I was poor. Did you Did you like Yellow Wolf? No, I couldn't. Get I like Yellow Wolf. Wolf. I yeah. wanted to. I like certain things from Yellow Wolf, but I couldn't get into the style. Mm. Yeah, I was like the, like there was a, a cross section of like Eminem and his stuff that were like really, I don't know, I always thought it was like moving out of the genre of hip hop into some sort of weird, I don't know, like, um, con- like it's not, con- it's not country, but it has like influence of being around that environment. Yeah, he has a song called uh, I Got My Own Boat, Yellow Wolf. It's a good song. Mm. It's about know. being left like, Buyers. It's very similar to this this poet that we're talking about. Right, Maria Rilke. Yeah, being um, left uh, into your own solitude and loneliness and abandonment and how he doesn't need anybody else because he's a weirdo poet. What do you think about all of this? I felt like by me... I like some of his stuff. I thought Mein Kampf was a little crazy. Josh, come on, dude. That Everybody was really crazy then. Things were really a little hectic in the late yeah, 30s. Like, you got to admit, everybody kind of got... In, you know, it's like it's when like like when you get into bell bottoms, right? And 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 I, I watched some of him performing those poems, and he's all like, he's really like he's passionate about it, but he's like, I'm the hand of Bornishan. Yeah, but well, you I know, don't understand just, it, but, but it's like you know, it's exciting. You have to perform that way when you're performing when you're performing in front of two hundred thousand people. I mean, yeah, right. it's like That's you know, it's, it's the same thing. I don't like arena rock. Just it doesn't talk, it doesn't speak to me. What's arena I rock? like indie shit. What's arena rock? Arena rock is like Aerosmith or oh, you, you like anything from Aerosmith? I mean, maybe I early know. Aerosmith. Here's the thing: arena rock is also like Katy Perry. Arena rock is like music for fifty thousand or more people at once. DC, DC. But the thing about it is, like, there are very few like songs that like are meant to be huge in that way that. Mm that speak to me on like a day-to-day level. Like I would say the only song that is so huge like that, that just because of maybe nostalgia, I have like day-to-day vibey feelings with are, what's that song by you 2 that goes It's a beautiful day, a beautiful day. You know that song? From like two thousand. Yes, it was when the it was when the millennium was turning. I remember they were yeah. playing nonstop. It reminds me of like a, a time of youth. Don't let it slip away. Yeah, it reminds me of like, you know what it reminds me of specifically when in two thousand. And now I will talk about my band. In the summer of two thousand, we were planning our tour, mm. and we were calling up all of these places in. Um, what was it like, you know, all across the country. And we were trying to like book shows and talk with, you know, bands that would, could get us a show. And we were like just out of high school, 
you know, and it was just like a, a time of, so that song for some reason, like actually has like some type of resonance. So it's nostalgic to you. Yeah, but I mean, it's weird when I hear a song like, I don't know, some big song that's on the radio. It's like, I don't feel it like on a personal day-to-day -day level sometimes. What I'm saying is I'm an indie snob. So did you have a, a surname? When you were writing poetry, or you let people know, you had to let people know it was from you. Um, and did you turn any of your poems like, into? Did you turn any of your poems into music or comedy? Um, well, you know, it's funny is that like when I was doing poetry, um, I did have a surname for my for my zine, and my name was Horace Mulligan. What, what for your what your zine? I had a zine. I don't and know what it, that is. Uh, I used to make like my own magazine and I would like distribute it. Like I would write it and I would get like some other people to write in it and I would photocopy it all together. And then at shows, I would give it out. That and was before you people had Facebook walls. You would just create a wall and make people stare at it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I was not the only one uh, to be doing it. Although I would love to take that credit. It was actually like a kind of popular phenomenon. No, I remember hearing the term. There was, I just, there I was just... a store on uh, St. Mark's Place called See Here. Do you guys remember it? No. It was there up until like, I guess, 2011. I mean, 2001. Oh, yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. Kevin was four. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's so much no, younger than I us. I was in the fifth grade. I was in the fifth grade. Uh, it was good times. Good times, 9-11. So why? What was it, John? It was like a publication place? or it was, it was a store of zines. Like, they actually... So they printed They printed your shit out? No, that's just been... That's just... Way past 2001, bro. Well, they still got those. They're called they King Bucks. No, 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 no. It was not like that. It was like um, this one store was, you know, this was like in 97, 98, 99. So the internet wasn't like fully in bloom. So there were people who were publishing zines all over the world and especially in America in the underground circuit. And this was a store that actually had the distributors from all of them and put them in one place in the city on St. Mark's Place, so it like fits, you know, that's like, St. Mark's Place used to be like such a hub of like alternative culture. It's really sad, bro. We were there the other day for a show and uh, the only people who are left are the Indian guys who sell sunglasses. I'm happy at least they're still there because to me, that is a piece of St. Mark's culture. That's been there for like 20, 30 years, at least 30 years. Yeah. So as long as the Indian guys can still sell cheap, Chinese sunglasses <laughs> will be all right. Oh, wait. So you were actually on St. Mark's Place? What was it like? Was there any action there? No. Uh, what, 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 when were we there, Kevin, the other day? What were we, what were we there for? You remember? Oh, we, we did the open mic at, uh, yeah. at a climate, at the new yeah. climate. No shit. Where is the new yeah. climate? It's the same, same it's climate, but it's called... Same place, uh, but it's called uh, Cellar called, 77. Yeah, it's called Cellar 77 now. Oh wow! Yeah, so they a hundred percent now they want to be a part of comedy. Yeah, they're a comedy bar club now. Wow! But it's the same exact thing, and they and they, all they did was they made the downstairs look worse and put dividers up. They put plastic dividers. Yeah, yeah. Holy <laughs> shit, dude! Wow, what was it like doing an open mic? How much did you pay for this mic, by the way? You had to buy a drink. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Um, uh, what they and what else? This is what they did. They. They took the uh, cushions off the couches because I guess they can hold like moisture and stuff. Wow. And yeah, and they put plastic dividers between. And where people, people well, you know, it would be really cool. I think if you go do that, Mike, double down and wear the mask and the face plastic covering with the strap. I just, go and like, cough, just to double down on being like, no. no I my, still opening, my opening bit is I go to each and every patient and I cough on them. Mm. How is it working? Well, they're, they're still alive. That's good. That's called so not, so not working. Yeah. No, you should working. be killing. You should be killing right now. You should be out there killing. You know what? Maybe we all should I'm be. I'm going to make this face after lunch. everything I say. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, guys, we got a, a fan letter. Did we? Oh, yes. Can you we read got it? a fan letter. Yes. Can you I'll read, read it, it on the air? Yeah. Is, is um, it almost poetry? Well, it, is it anyone that we know? No, it's it's from. It says, uh, uh, 
it says long time listener, last time listener. Um, yeah, it's not, I'll get into it. Okay. Uh, I'm writing that Kevin did. No, here's the letter. I am writing about your recent episode of Wiki After Dark, season one, episode seven, three fantastic fun guys watching fantastic fun guy. You guys don't know shit about mushrooms. This is the most uninformative, unfunny horse shit I've ever watched. <laughs> In particular, Jonathan Kaplan is extremely unfunny. His Anthony Jeselnik with science references shtick wears thin after two minutes. Mm. And other guys, don't think you're getting off easy. You guys are all morons. <laughs> but Kevin's okay. <laughs> Signed, psych, you don't have any real fans. I wrote this. I actually wrote that letter. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm very sad about it. I'm, is the Kevin okay real or did you make that up? No, I wrote the whole, I wrote the whole letter. No, no, it's a real letter. Um, but yeah, it's it's. Is that the gist of it, or is that that's that's, that's the gist? The, that's the letter, and I'm like, you know, it's I'm like, you know, maybe we shouldn't like improvise the whole show. Maybe we should like write it down. Maybe we should write it down because well, like is this is this a strictly a commentary on Wikipedia after dark because you do an entire informative is, animal? I think you know, this is. I think it might just be from the from the last episode. But maybe I, it's just your here's entire. Here's the thing: when I he, when I get when I hear that, I'm like, it's like you know, I can get like as much um, ac like love from positive uh, feedback, but the minute I get like a bad feedback, it hurts my feelings. Well, oh, whoever, can, can I say something, John? Yeah. Can I, can I say something here? Yeah. Hey, you, person who wrote that. You spent 10 minutes out of your day to write that. And you hurt someone. That's what you did. Do you think you're Three a good people. person now? Do you think you like Kevin gonna stop us from doing this kind of comedy? It's never gonna happen. Yeah. Also, you wanted to be entertained. You decided to click play. You didn't need to listen to the whole thing. You said they got tired after two minutes. So I'm assuming you only listened to, to two minutes of it. Let me tell you something, a hilarious episode. It was fucking, it was fucking awesome. That's why it's called Wiki After Dark because we're not trying to inform you. Wikipedia, if you get your information from Wikipedia, you're doing something wrong, no? Mm -hmm. if you're getting information from us, you're definitely doing something wrong. We're just trying to be kind of funny here with right. vague information that we got from a fucking documentary. Or, or also, also maybe throw out a subject or two out there. Something that you would want to listen to, something that you would want us to look like complete fools talking about, we'll gladly do it. Also, if you think you know more about mushrooms than me, then I invite you to eat an entire ounce of mushrooms with me. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pay for it though. Well, whoever wins pays for it. <laughs> really am thankful that you- You uh, fucking Yelp writer. You I'm happy somebody's listening. Yeah. I'm just, what I'm really happy about was that you guys took that moment to have my back because mm -hmm. I, what I thought was going to happen is that I thought that I was going to read that letter and you guys were going to be like, oh yeah, Kaplan does suck. He, and you guys are just going like to both be like, read, like come out of the spell and be like, this guy sucks. What are we wasting our time with him? And uh, I'm just- Well, one, that's not true. But two, I don't, I, I mean, Yo, I'm right or die, bitch. Ooh. Yeah, like, and plus, John, you were my inspiration when I first started doing comedy. I told you that. Thank you, man. I don't know, I, you have said that, but I feel like sometimes that's just like Josh being an extra nice guy. No, I told you, it's a true story. I saw you perform yeah, and I was like- The only reason why I know that's a true story is because Josh has said that story uh, drunk with me alone without you around. Holy shit. Well, that really means a lot. And honestly, if I learned one thing from this experience, I'm like, maybe I'm, I think that I'm, I could become off mean. <laughs> <laughs> You're a very mean, needy, um, wormy, mm. self-conscious, um, you know what would best describe you, John? You're a, you're a poet. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a weird thing. I'm coming to this realization, but you know, the thing was, I wanted to talk about Rhino Maria Rilke because Rhino Maria Rilke has gotten me out of some jams in my life. Wait, what does that even mean? So Rhino Maria Rilke is this poet who he talked about, um, like what basically his thing was like, the reason he's famous is almost not as much for his poems as for this like advice about staying true to your vision when like the cards are against you. He, like he wrote these like letters back to- um, The college student, I, I listened to right. some of them. So what happened was he was, he had like a couple books out but like nothing had really hit in his life yet. But he was living his life as an artist. And one of the students at the military school that he used to go to had one of his books and was a fan, like a true fan. So he wrote, so the fan wrote um, Rainer Maria Rilke the let, this letter and Rainer Maria Rilke wrote the most giving thoughtful responses back. And mm -hmm. they had this correspondence over years and Rainer Maria Rilke's um, letters, they collected them and they're like, this shit is as, it, this thing is the best thing that has ever been written. And yeah. in my life, you know, I've always like tried to uh, success or failure, stay the course of like my own artistic path. Mm -hmm. And in my twenties, like when I was super lonely and super like unsure of myself, his book of those letters was like so unbelievably like strengthening for myself. Is there any one of those letters that really stuck out to you? Like, okay, I need to follow. Like, you know, you you, you try to reference it when you do your work? Well, like, I'll give you a little spot. Like, so for instance, like uh, the, the first letter that the kid wrote to Ryder Maria Rilke, he sent him some of his poems. I, I listened to his response to this and I, I, I want you to continue. I'm sorry to cut you off. That's all good. When I listened to, cause, uh, and it was a famous actor who was reading this. So um, uh, Anthony Hopkins, Anthony oh, Hopkins. Shit. Wow. And I, he didn't read the kid's letter. He read the response to this right. first letter. And I, I honestly, when I heard this, I got a better understanding of who you were. And I also got a better understanding of who I was. And I, I, and I, I actually ended up did, did liking, I ended up liking this poet. Basically, uh, just real quick, my synopsis, John, and then you can give the details. What I got from it was he tells the kid, don't fucking do this to try to get an end result. Like, that's not the point. Like, look into yourself. It's, if, if this is something that you need to do, even if you stink at it, continue to do it anyway. But only do, it, but only do it for the purpose of self-serving something that is inside of you. Am I right? Absolutely, absolutely. He, oh, that's fucking awesome. He also says, also, like, yeah, yeah go ahead. he also says, if you can't find out if you can't figure out what you want to write about, don't blame, don't blame poetry. Blame, blame yourself your for not being able to see the simple things in your life, the simple truths. The absurdity. Around you and just write what you have. Like find the beauty in the things around you. And like that, like, yeah, exactly how, how Josh, um, how Josh like uh, worded it, but like that has been like such a, you know, because you, I don't know, I feel like I still try to follow that. And, and you know, letter after letter, he just is like crushing with like good advice. Well, I think the thing is, you know, comedy, comics, you know, you know, pursuing, uh, you know, our careers as entertainers in, in comedy, we have to, live by that code until we make some sort of, you know, success, some sort of, you know, uh, monetary success, some sort of, you know, actual, you know, recognition until then, you know, we're just dreamers going around buying $5 beers so we can fucking make jokes for fucking other, you know, dreamers. You know what I'm saying? Totally. Um, I mean, I feel like sometimes the way, uh, I, I think I think of myself a little bit like separate from, you know, not, you know, living in Long Island, not living in the city. I've always felt apart from 
where shit is happening. And I think sometimes Reiner Maria Rilke's uh, whole thing about be you, like be the person that like the unique circumstance around you um, like grows within you. So like, if you're not in the city, then don't try to be in the city, try to be what you are. Like use the things that are, that are already right. like make you a unique uh, person. He, he, it's almost like he's saying that like every single perspective is valid and there's beauty and there's something that is exists for each person's perspective exactly where they are that's worthy of exploring and talking about and creating from is it, uh, kevin what do you think is this well your... it's crazy because in, in comedy one of the fucking i mean i'm, I'm going to compare really the comedy is uh one of the things that changed comedy for me in, in early on was someone to, I don't, it could have been jonathan i'm not sure who it was someone said don't worry about the results like don't do it for the results do it do it and, and whatever the results come from it that's what it is right and then if you don't like the result then work on changing the result you know gradually like it, it'll happen gradually it'll happen uh so that's it i mean I, it might have been louis or jonathan i'm not sure who it was yo, but i heard it and that shit really kind of like i heard that maybe a year and a half in and if you see me from the first year and a half i was okay and then after that i kind of started getting better and and you and it's, it's a lack of fucks you got to give when you're doing art, you gotta not care about how other it, people. It are. was Jonathan because it was when we first started doing the, um, we were doing the mics at Yerman's and stuff. And I remember John saying it wasn't, it didn't matter how the joke was received. Yeah, whatever the way, whichever way it was received, whether it was like good or bad or silent, every response was a good response. And it's, it, 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 it was something like you. It was your job to play with that. Like okay, oh, you. Yeah. You know, that's for so sure. like, so, you know, after that, like, and then I took a, a oh, clown, you took a clown, class. I took a clown course and that like, even that one course, like I took a lot from that, Ooh. like to the point where it was overwhelming almost. Yeah. Well, right? I've, I've found that when you take a clown class, like it doesn't like, it still has to turn over and then become part of the engine. Because once you go out into the audience again, with this new awareness, you're like, how do I deal with all of this happening? You know? Yeah, sure. so man, that's really good fucking advice, y'all. To give a, I mean, what year was this? This was probably eighteen because we started in eighteen. No, 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 no. Oh, talking about Reiner Maria Rilke. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Oh, this was a hundred years ago, dude. Reiner Maria Rilke was literally writing these letters in nineteen oh three, nineteen oh four. Fuck, that's before my grandmother was born, son. He had. They had just built the foundations of Auschwitz. <laughs> Well, Rainer Maria Rilke is half Jewish. And that's why they killed him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he murdered? No, no, Josh, is there any, he, he is there any reality it. where- <laughs> He cannot do Where it. somebody First doesn't get, Does everybody in history get killed at Auschwitz who's Jewish? <laughs> Am I gonna go to Auschwitz too? Is that <laughs> part of every Jew's story? The Nazis are building time machines like in Men in High Castle. And they're collecting all the Jews and they're taking us back. <laughs> the camps. By the way, happy Hanukkah, everybody. Is tonight the first night? It's the first night of Hanukkah. Can we do a prayer? You want to do the prayer? I would love I to. The, I already lit the candles. Can I we can do light it for you. Yes. Wait, should you send me? What, what, I've never done a prayer, so at well, least not a Jewish one. Um, do it in your way. No, no how, how do you do, do it? Do your version of Jewish. Kevin, you want to come light the, the menorah? You do it, because I lit the menorah already. Come here. This okay. is so fucking great that we're doing this. <laughs> yo, this is going to be, yo, frame it, and I'll make the cover. This <laughs> I'll put us all together. <laughs> A very wiki after dark thing. A very wiki after dark. Hold on. Well, I don't have my, I don't have my, uh, I don't have my uh, phone because I'm using it to record us. That's okay. Um, this is the rules for, for the, uh, dreidel. Um, uh, all right, let's, let's just pretend we're Jewish for a second. Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Kevin can light the Shemesh. 
Here, Kevin, come light the Shemesh. Okay, you know what? I'll light it. Yeah, you got a, you got a little afraid. Like now you know, carry it. And now look. So now you want to light it from right to left. There you go. There you go. And now put that in the middle. There you go. Oh, oh no, now light it back. See? There you go. My friend Kevin is Dominican. <laughs> and today he becomes a Jew. He finally believes in only one God. All the other religions No more they believe there's no God of them. But there's one just like this one candle. There's only one God. And tonight, Kevin's Jewish. Amen. Oh, oh praise be to Hashem. All right. Now you're supposed to go put that in the window so everybody knows where the Jews live. <laughs> that is, that's how they double cross. You them. could do it, but you've got to move the shades all the way so we don't burn the house down. Uh, there's a really famous picture from uh, before like Crystal Macht when they like officially started rounding up the Jews, but it's across the street from like a Nazi, like, uh, like the SS headquarters. Mm -hmm. And there's a menorah in the window I know. The candles that's, burning. That was in uh, Alanis Morissette's song, Ironic. <laughs> <laughs> a menorah on a Nazi's house. Across the, across the street from the Nazi uh, Gestapo. <laughs> across the street from the SS. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's doing his best not to light the house on fire right now. Wow, I guess that widening the lens really makes your apartment look big. Yeah, well, it's not tiny. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's some dangerous shit. I mean, there there has to have been countless, countless menorah fires in houses <laughs> over the years. I was watching a movie that had a candle fire as part of the plot, and like, I don't know if I don't know if we're like super trained like nowadays because we don't even use candles because it like creates fire. Right. But like, the minute the like this kid puts a candle up and like. They, he just goes to the next scene and like the minute he walked away from the thing I'm like that thing is going on fire and like I haven't seen like the way they did it like it really burned the house down it's like it's such a terrible thing when a house gets burned down there's a there's a TikTok video out now one of the comics that I know made a funny one to make fun of it it's a girl it's a real TikTok video she's she's dancing in front of her house that's on fire so like the, the her house is completely a, a ablaze and the fire department is there putting it out and she's doing a TikTok video. No, honestly, hats off to that girl. Bro, that it's kind crazy. of hilarious. That it is, is that is fucking funny and kudos to her for um just <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> just just fucking going with it, going with life and what it has to offer. I just like love the idea that she is like literally a minute before that video pouring gasoline all over her house and being like, I'm going to be on the fucking For You page. You know, Kevin, what you just said is actually a very fundamental Jewish belief. Dude, you already know. That that even when, uh, even when things are at their worst, you're supposed to still just go with it and believe that it's always for the best and it's always by God's plan and that it's always going to be for the greater good. Hmm. Because, you know, hope now, what will you, what she do? What she do just now? Well, she, she went viral. viral. She went viral. What's gonna happen? Someone's gonna make a. Gonna, they're gonna do a GoFundMe and they're gonna the fix GoFundMe her house. And she's gonna have a bigger house than she's ever <laughs> had in her life. Jonathan, burn your house down, bro. Yeah. Really have it. And Kevin and I will be in the front and say, Ain't "Nobody got time for that." Yeah, but I mean, I think it would be amazing if I burned the apartment that I live in and the guy who owns it as well down, and then me as a as a forty one year old man dancing outside of it <laughs> wholeheartedly like really doing like a, an intricate little arm dance <laughs> no you know what would be funny is if they already put the fire out but you forgot to do the video so you relight whatever was left of the house on fire <laughs> and then oh, you record it. i know i would just immediately i would just be going to jail the video would be me going to jail <laughs> then you can make tiktoks in jail 
of you getting raped. Imagine making tic- imagine being like <laughs> yeah, t- first of all, there are TikToks in jail. And there's some of the funniest, best videos you could ever watch in your life. Mm. Really? Do you dude, think there's, that- dude, there's guys in jail on TikTok, bro. Right after writing writing poetry, they'll just start fucking uh they start showing off their place, but they're in jail. So they're like, yo, girl, I got all the Fritos you could want. I got, like, I got, oh, I saw that. You yo, saw the one where they were showing the burgers. They all had oh burgers. Oh my by god! They were showing their food that they make, and it's some of the. It's like crazy what people do in these in these. In, like they're showing off as like, yo, girl, when you come through, yo, you don't gotta worry about snacks and shit. Like you yeah. know, what I mean? like they still got a stunt. There was a. Do you feel like it's nice that they get to participate in like a TikTok culture, even though they're in jail? Well, it's illegal. John, did you? John, did you ever watch uh, Oz? That's an old show. I don't. I didn't watch Oz. Oz was was about. Oz was about prisons on HBO. It was a fucking really sick show. And one of the main characters was a character. I believe his name was Poe. He was the he was the jail poet, and they used to cut scenes with him talking, saying poems. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think like do we one of the things like I was gonna say about um Ryan Maria Rilke that also I feel like he how he helped me was he had this whole attitude. Did we talk about did we talk about solitude yet? No. No. Okay. Ryan Maria Rilke had this whole attitude about being alone. Mm. And I think that my mind got like really, I don't know. I really, I got to say like this thing that he proposed, I like definitely believed in and like sort of, I feel like I live my life in this way. That, you could, that you're always going to be left to solitude? That's what you're talking about? Kind of, kind of. But like, let me read you a part of, let me read you a thing that he wrote. And I feel like this does explain it kind of. And I think this whole episode was a scam for you to be able to read poetry to Kevin and I. <laughs> You're maybe, let's see. Go ahead, man. I want to hear it, please. All right. He goes, therefore, love your solitude and try to sing out with the pain it causes you. For those who are near you are far away. And this shows that the space around you is beginning to grow vast. Be happy about your growth, in which, of course, you can't take anyone with you and be gentle with those who stay behind. Be confident and calm in front of them and don't torment them with your doubts and don't frighten them with your faith or joy, which they wouldn't be able to comprehend. Seek out some simple and true feeling of what you have in common with them, with, which doesn't necessarily have to alter when you find yourself, when you find yourself change again and again, and again. When you see them, love life in a form that's not your own and be indulgent towards those who are growing old who are afraid of the aloneness that you trust. And don't expect any understanding, but believe in a love that is being stored up for you like an inheritance and have faith in this love and have faith that in this love, there is a strength and a blessing so large that you can travel as far as you wish without having to step outside it. Mm. Okay, this is not a problem though, right? That's from one of the other letters. That's you gotta read this book. I gotta read this book. is this also is very indicative. See, everything leads back to God. This he's basically talking about God. Mm. Because you know, you can live this life of solitude where you feel like, you know, the the the, the illusion of being alive is that we're we're these finite beings and that we only have this certain amount of time to accumulate experiences and love and companionship. And if I don't get this, and if I don't get this family and if i don't create this thing if i don't have this you know this story tale you know relationship with people with with a wife with friends then i'm done if i don't do this now and it's over and that's basically stating which is the truth it's something i believe you know it's you know your, your your life is infinite so what you're gaining from the you know the 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 sorrows from the solitudes is this vast amount of knowledge you know it's this growth of your soul things are painful because you're growing and you know it's it's a real to me it's a real belief in the the eternity of the soul and the evidence of the almighty and the creator Mm, amen 
a man. You know, I also feel like motherfuckers need to read that shit. That should be that should be taught more. Yo, appreciate your solitude. Appreciate that shit, cause like yo, we don't appreciate solitude. We got Instagram, we got Facebook, we got TikTok, we got. We always gotta feel like there's something around, and then I think people are really depressed because they're supposed to be by themselves for a little while. Yeah. But instead, they have this facade where there's motherfuckers around them all the time, and they. I always be- feel like a lot of like loneliness and solitude, and then I get home and Kevin's here, and I'm like, "Fuck, Kevin's here." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's Reiner Maria Kev. <laughs> Reiner Maria Kev, yo. Look, I mean, same. I mean, yo, bro. Motherfuckers do got to be alone. I don't think not. I don't think people these days know how to be alone anymore. I think the pandemic. Um, we like like we said this early, like last uh, year, but like we're gonna find out who is gonna break. Yep. But you know. What's wild is that, like, I mean, for, so, like, this is like a mindset that I feel like I have been okay with. Like, you know, in a long time, like, I've been like hoping for time to like just be like I have been in the in the pandemic, like alone with my things. But like, what's interesting is that no matter what, the the more simple you make your space, the the more clearer, who, like the what makes you yourself and like the the deep like you can't you can all the distractions are to hide from being alone with yourself and who you really are yep yeah you're absolutely right and that's why you see so many miserable rich people Mm. because they bury themselves in like jewelry and you know nice things and vacations but no matter where they go as much as they can distract themselves they still find themselves with themselves yeah and if if you're not you know entertained by your own self if there's if there's no if you don't hold value in you yourself by yourself then eventually all the money in the world all the entertainment all the whatever it is you use to distract yourself you're gonna get faced with that a man looks into the abyss Mm, that's a good one too right yeah Here's another banger he had. This one's short. Let everything happen to you. Beauty and terror. Just keep going. No feeling is final. God, that's fucking true. Nice. This guy's spitting bars. Yeah, yeah, that's bars. That's bars. That's almost mystical level bars. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's 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 biggie level bars. Yo. This yeah. guy, this guy's might might be the biggie of a uh, of poet. Even though what he's writing right now is in poetry, is like a a self help book for man. He's like a <laughs> self-help book for man you know what this guy is this you know what no we should talk about this what this guy is is when we need more of this and we need this to be taught to our children we need it to be given to them we need it to be explained to them because without this what do we have these days we have incel oh we, yes the, we need more incels like are people to. They don't have the the doctrine of this guy. They don't have the understanding of the value of them being lonely and being, you know, without a, you know, a girlfriend and not having, you know, the lifestyle of a Mac from the Mac Almanac. Like mm. they, yeah, that's, they, that's, if they would have, I, I think Mac on Instagram at Mac. I bet you a lot of these guys who have like shot up schools, Columbine, all of them, if they've never even heard of Ryan and Maria Rilke. I guarantee you. I guarantee you know this it's a failure of our school system yeah well you know what the thing is is that most people don't aren't interested in stuff it's very hard to get people interested in whatever's not being like shoved down their throat from whatever channel they're plugged into because i feel like even within niche genres there's like a Like you would say, like we're into comedy and we're also into like a particular, like a free, like radio station of comedy. But even within that, there's like a hierarchy of what like is popular and then like what is, you know what I mean? And whatever genre you go to, you also have, and I feel like people are just not open to things. The people are not, like I just, uh, I showed this girl, I was, all right, I'm just gonna say, I showed this girl Tim Dillon. The mm-hmm. other day, but it was like a rant that Josh put me onto. 
And it was one of the best rants I've ever heard anyone go on. And it was oh, just- you wake up in the morning, you find yourself, you're 40 years old, you don't know, you're fucking living your friend, your friend's doing better than you are, you're fucking, you're trying yeah, and- hard, you're trying your hardest. And then, like, I, I wanted to see that. That's a John. It's a really good piece. It's, a, it's honestly a really good, honestly, on the level of this guy. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, John. It really is. Comp- it's comparable. It's very, very comparable to this guy. Except he, except Dylan do, is not as much of an optimist as this guy is, which is why I love this guy. Because this guy, he, 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 he wants you to acknowledge. That's a good way to put it. He is, uh, uh, how do you say his name? I, uh, it's hard. Rainer Maria Relk? Relk. Right. Let's just call him Relk. R- yeah, or real K, real he's real without the optimism. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. So yeah. It, 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 but and so I was scared to send it to her because I was like, one, this is super fucking dark. Like, you got to be a certain kind of human being to understand and why this is funny, right? Because I, I wouldn't. There's certain friends I could send that to who are who's not in the comedy world, and there's certain people. Who I know, like you, they you, like, you oh, send it to certain people and they think that you're like suicidal. Suicidal, exactly. Yeah. They, they, they start sending me like, "Hey, Kevin, you okay?" I don't need that. I was like, "Wow, you why this is great? You don't understand." And she got it right away. Thankfully, like she was like, "Holy shit, I should not be laughing this hard at this." And she was like, "I can't believe I've never heard of this guy before." Right? And I was like, "Oh, you just gotta be in a. I just I realized you gotta be in a certain sector yeah. of comedy, and you gotta." You know, it. it's funny. I forgot about this, John. I, you know, speaking of loneliness, on. On uh, Thanksgiving, which was, was that last week or the week before? I think the week before. The week before it was Thanksgiving. You know, my kid was in Jamaica. I, you know, I didn't go and see my mom because, you know, she's old and I don't want to get her sick and I'm out, you know, in clubs and stuff. And uh, I posted on my Twitter, on my Facebook. I was like, I spent my first Thanksgiving completely alone. And I was like, I gotta say, it was pretty, it was pretty good. (laughs) And people were making sad faces and like sending me like, Hey man, keep your head. I, and I was like, I'm, I was seriously enjoying being by myself on Thanksgiving. Like I really wasn't sad. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Is, uh, that, uh, that's thought, real delicious. That is real delicious right there. Real delicious is the way to be. Yeah, real dude. Delicious death. Death, 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 death. That would death. be my. That would be my hip hop name. Real delicious. That'd be cool. So, <clears throat> yeah, man, uh, his fucking stuff is is great. It really is. And, you know, I I went in with like, you know, a very. um... Yeah, I actually what I thought was going to happen this episode is I thought that the two of you guys were going to fucking annihilate me. I'm going to tell you why, because Kevin and I had a big discussion about poetry before we started this, because Kevin and I have uh, been at and hosted a couple of mixed uh, open mics that had poets there. Mm -hmm. Hopefully none of the poets that are friends with me (laughs) see this. (laughs) John, I, I wish you I wish we had this recorded. I hosted one night, Kevin was there, and I was like, and I started making fun of them. I was like, you know, you guys are fucking ridiculous. I was like, I was like, this is the stupidest art form in the world. <laughs> and then I just started improving poetry. Oh, I remember this when you did this show. I wish I could have been there. Yeah, I remember. And it that. sounded it, it sounded just like everyone else who had gone up and they and even they started laughing because they started acknowledging the yeah. absurdity. Yeah, you know, okay, so in the late 90s, this is good that we landed on this. So when I did poetry, um, there it was a little bit of a different scene. There was a little bit more comedy involved in it. Do you guys remember Deaf Poetry Jam? Of course. Oh, yeah. And Kanye okay. had some of the funniest fucking verses on that shit, bro. Yo, so they made Deaf Comedy Jam after the scene in New York and surrounding, you know, LA and stuff. It's, it's slam poetry, it so, right? It got it got so big that it's that called it, slam, right, John? Slam. Yeah, they actually made a couple documentaries about it. So here's the crazy thing. Here's uh, here's where the show is gonna like actually congeal. So when I was like 16 and 17, writing zines and doing poetry at Sea Here in St. Mark's Place, there was a zine by this guy Bo Sia, who was sick fucking incredible I, I i love his work right and i at this time i didn't know shit about rilk i did not know who the fuck that was i was just 16 year old kid 17 i wrote a letter to bo Sia, the author of the zine and also a slam poet and he wrote me back saying you should check out right you should check out letters to a young poet by Rainer maria rilk he basically was like yeah 
I'm not. Yeah. I'm not going to do. I'm this. not this guy. Yeah. I'm not the guy you you think I am. <laughs> Here's the guy that actually is who you think they are. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, John. You got. I was going to let you go. One of the hypotheses that Kevin and I came to a conclusion before the show started, and and once you, I, I, I liked him a little bit before I got on, and then once you read these poems and we talked about it, I have but a few poems and letters. Well, he has well, no, also he has read poems. poems also. I have he a huge. Poems. He's he's. I, I would almost call him a philosopher. He's mm. a philosopher. But I have a huge appreciation for him. But what Kevin and I said, the problem with poetry, at least in its current state, is it's the same thing with that. Everybody thinks they're a fucking rapper. Oh, you understand? Yeah. Every fucking idiot, you know, like if, you know, you, when we were kids, you know, I have a friend like, yo, son, come here, listen to this, man. And, they fucking, and everybody thinks they're fucking a rapper. And not everybody yes. is a fucking rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like, not everybody is going to be this supremely talented thing, but everybody is going out there and doing it. So I'm not saying if it was up to uh, Zelk, he would say, go and do it. Like, even right, if, but you if, stick, they, if you stick to with it, like, right. But like most of the people who you're talking about, like, aren't still rappers. Like the people who were saying that they were rappers back then, are they all still rapping? I, I, I have a few people on speed dial that if I call them like, yo, bro, you want to do a couple of bars on my uh, podcast right now? Uh, how come we haven't to ask them to do that? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a lot better than talking about this nerdy bullshit. I seriously would call someone right now, but I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings because if they found out that we yeah. were this, it is mean. I think should we be? I, should I be nicer? No. Uh, well, yes. Let's talk about. I mean, because this dude Zalki is that his last name? Relki Zalki. Relki, real K. He. Everything that, that the reason I have I, I like him so much is because you know I'm a I'm a I'm a piece of shit comic. I say bad things and like not the nicest stuff on and off stage. But at the end of the day, like creating is always great. But if you're creating and you're bringing positivity with what you're doing, if you're bringing like something that's going to uplift people, that's a mitzvah. And that, like, that is the highest form of art. And you can be really, really funny and do those two things. I just haven't figured out how to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's weird. Like I tend to, what I'm excited about in, as, in comedy or like, as a comedic idea, I think like I naturally go toward that thing is I find it funny when a situation in my mind is so incongruous that like laughter is the response. Like, for instance, like one of the reasons why the first scene of, of Mares and Caps is that scene with the parents who have literally just lost their son. Like, right. and the weight of that is so like heavy and then like right in that weight mares is trying to hit them up for information because it's like so like extremely the two wrongest things that yeah. i find that funny i love that snap of like this is wrong like it's just you have to escape that moment by laughing right yeah. it's it's it, the words the use using the word to describe it it takes away its humor but you're talking about awkwardy is it awkward? awkwardness or, it is or, it's awkwardness it's the it's the inappropriateness yeah yeah you know i i i think uh the problem with that is you're skating on a line which by the way i don't know if, if our listeners have have seen the awesome trailer to mares and caps have you shared it with them trailer is good the episode is good too it's a I mean, I meant the full episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the point that I was trying to make, for myself at least speaking, you know, like you, I, I don't want to fall into the trap of having to say the most of true mm. thing to the to the story. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Like it does. I think that it's different with you guys than it is with an audience. You know what I mean? When you when you are doing a show, you take the temperature of the moment, you know what I mean? Like we've all been in like crowd work situations where it's like, you see how far you can go. You know what I mean? Like you can tell, like that's part of clowning. Like you can tell if you're getting a yes from the eyes of the audience, how further you can go. Or maybe you need to like riff out till you're really getting like the joy yeah. that will allow you to, to take those next steps. But with you guys, like, you know, we're all just, 
you know, I'm, you're getting a delay of like even hearing my words, you know? It feels yeah. like um, there's a barrier, you know, it's like we are not in the same room. That's one of the reasons. Oh, you mean you're talking about the podcast? Yeah, like we're like, this is not as good as it was when we were doing the show together. Yeah. I think it's still pretty good. It is pretty good. And you know what? Honestly, for, for a, a Zoom thing, because I've seen a lot of these Zoom things, 90% of Zoom things is, I mean, I, no, you go, please. Mm -hmm. but, but what were you going to say? Yeah. How, you know what I've never done? I've never done a Zoom comedy show. We have. What are they like? If they just leave the camera on us and let us just do our thing, it's funny. It's really funny. <laughs> but, uh, it's uh, it's hard for some, like, I, 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 you can't do stand up that way. It's not stand up. It shouldn't be called stand up. It's not stand up, right? It, it should be a conversation. It's basically having a podcast with 12 people. And yeah, and you lead them into the you lead them into the joke. You lead them into the bit, right? It's, it it kind of is it almost helps you with crowd work, if you will, because like you do meet and it helps you write a bit sometimes. Because sometimes people, there are people. Some I was on on a show where there was this ninety year old woman, and she I I engaged with her, and then she took it as oh he wants to talk to me. I'm gonna be. And then she started talking and like interrupting me and for my side, I'm like, oh no, 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 you go ahead now. That sounds fun. That sounds like something I would it, like to it, do. It was fucking fun. It was actually fun. It was on uh, it was on uh, Sean Wicken. Shout out Sean Wicken. It was on uh, the Stoner Morning Show. Stoner Morning Show. Oh, yeah. So, well, but awesome. then you do shows where it's like, I, I tell them right away, hey, respond. And by respond, if you have a thought, say something. If you have, just, just talk. Because oh, like, cool. I say that right away because everybody just wants to do the material and it's like, right. what? Oh, I'm so glad you do that. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, I, the, I, I had to start it off like that because like, it's so awkward. There's yeah. 12 people like this pretending to laugh. Like there's people pausing for a laugh. And it's like, what are you doing? I just yeah. remembered that I, Marianne and I uh, were, uh, Pat, we were judges on um, UGG on yeah. his show. And one of the comedians, I'm not going to say his name, but literally, he was like this with a microphone. <laughs> I saw and, someone do that on that and show. And on my, like, I was a judge. So <laughs> my first oh, thing was like, no. why are you holding a mic? Is that for, is that so that we know it's comedy? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's almost like when my friend Kev, Kevin changes his name to Kevin Sanchez Comedy on Instagram. What's been going on with your Instagram handle? Should we have an Instagram handle intervention? I'm very anti anybody putting comedy with their name on Instagram. Like Jonathan Kaplan Comedy? Mm, yeah. It's, it's you get what I'm saying? Especially with the comments I've been getting lately, I don't even think those words <laughs> go together. You can write Jonathan Kaplan Poet. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, my answer, some I listened to like a 22 year old kid. I was like, you should change that. It makes no sense. Live with Sanchez. Oh yeah, I didn't mind and, it. And I, I was like, I like. And then like I, I changed. I was like, just uh, nothing feels right. What feels right is what I had. Yeah. You change it all the way back. Yeah. That's cool. You know what? That's really good. That's like a self searching moment. That was almost Rilkean. How you were like, who is the real me? Is this right. thing the real me? Is that no? I'm. Live with Sanchez. That's right. cool. Yeah, uh, that's a man, just... a man looks into the newspaper he was wrapped in. <laughs> <laughs> and when nothing looks back, he realizes who he is. Mm. <laughs> that is pretty fucking great, dude. Um, it's going to be, uh, it's Hanukkah tonight. So happy Hanukkah to everybody. Thank you. Um, and it's going to be Christmas soon. Are you going to go uh, and celebrate Christmas with your family? Or are you going to spell it in solitude? at home as a, a Jew Mayan? Um, well, you know, it's funny, like my sister, you know, we're Jewish, but I was kicked out of Hebrew school. And right. we also had- For putting swastikas on your desk. You heard my whole bit, right? The kids. Um, no, you, you did it, I thought. No, I didn't, oh, I did it, <laughs> I did it to, to like make a false flag. That's actually a yeah. funny bit. <laughs> 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 that would be. <laughs> I faked it just like the Holocaust. No. That's what you're gonna do. <laughs> Yo, 
I like the idea that I got kicked out of Hebrew school for Somebody's- putting swastikas on my own desk. <laughs> That's a crazy implosion of... For the record, I got kicked out of Hebrew school because my mom is Honduras, Honduran, but at the same time, I was getting into fights at school because other kids were carving swastikas on my desk. But I really do love the, the let's cut out the middleman and just... <laughs> and just make this fucked up thing. Um, well, but- had you known the the unkindness that they did to you, which was a really big sin and not a mitzvah, then you know it would have been there would have been some sort of reasoning to do it. But at the time, you had an affinity of being a Jew. No, I yeah, and I think I've no. What I was going to say is that like, so my mom, it you know she like doesn't really consider her. I mean, she doesn't consider herself having any religion because. She, she like knew she was like in her family because she was adopted. She was like found in the woods. I told you this, right? So like she always was sort of in that very telenovela way, like dissed by like the adopting family. Like you're not one of us. Yeah. And it was all this like, you, Kevin, you know what that's like. Yep. Yeah. So she like, you know, had it makes a Christmas tree, made a Christmas tree in our house, but like, it wasn't like Christian, but she also would put menorahs up and do the whole thing with me. Like when I was a kid. So I, and then when I got kicked out of like Hebrew school, I was like, I understand Judaism and religion in my own way, in the way that like, do you know what syncretism is? No. So when- What is syncretism? syncretism? So in the world, like when a conquering when a conquering country like takes the like the power colonizes a place the people who are getting taken over they have to drop their religion and religion, do yeah. the new religion but what happens is the new religion hold on a second kevin you put the menorah the wrong way this is exactly what i'm talking about i have to go fix this guy keep talking the, the people who like adopt the new religion they do it in their old religion ways they sort of like can only conceptualize the new religion through their old paradigm. So I think of how I grew up, whereas I have these religious concepts, but they are only like my own personal versions of them. Because my sister was like, oh, we're gonna, like we should do something that's Jewish with my nephew. And she was thinking about how to doing it right. And I'm just like, do it the way that you know it in your heart. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, the fact that he's going to do something connected to that is all that matters. Yeah, that's true. The the irony of that, John, is that that in itself is actually a fundamental Jewish ideology. That you, a a man's relationship with God is strictly his own. It's It's a private thing. So you, every Jew worships to God in their own way. They say their own prayer. They have, you know, like, there's, of course, there's the, you know, the actual things that you're said you're supposed to do if you follow by the playbook, but the most important relationship, the most important connection is your own way. It's whatever is authentic to you. And is, as long as it's, you know, coming from your heart, it's as good, if not better than anything that's been like pre-written by any of the stages. Whoa, dude, that makes me feel really good about how I've been living my life. Mm. Um, because like, you know, I think I, my religion concept is like, it's like I have a little bit of Judaism mixed with a little bit of like X-Files stuff mixed with a little bit of real. And that's like my- Right. Well, listen, as long as you believe in one God, definitely, I would definitely be, I would definitely buy into the, into the philosophy of Relk. I think he's fucking really, really great. And, and there's no, there's no need to discount, uh, UFOs and extraterrestrials and the mm-hmm. paranormal when you mm-hmm. when it comes to Judaism. All of that stuff is in the in the Torah to begin with. Uh, the only thing it says about it is it's like, yeah, it's there, it exists. <clears throat> but the most important thing is God. And that's the only thing that you need to be concerned with. Cool. You can understand things and appreciate them and want to know about them. But at the end of the day, the only thing that really makes the decision of what happens is God. John, John, if someone would have told you 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Okay. That you get kicked out of Hebrew school. But in your 40s, a man named Joshua Patton 
was going to bring you back into Hebrew school. <laughs> he was going to say, you know what? You've been Jewish, Jewish this whole time and you didn't even have to do anything. Um, yeah, you know what? It's pretty wild. I would have never thought, you know, I've had so many different, um, you, you ever see Zelig? It's the Woody Allen movie, Zelig. Yeah, I've seen pieces of it. I'm, I'm, it's not the greatest movie, but it's an interesting concept, though. Because I'm not a like, huge fan of Woody Allen. All right, dude, but this concept of this movie is pretty good, though. What is it? So, basically, he, Zelig, is able to, like, metamorphosize into whoever he hangs out with to get by. And the movie's a metaphor for, like... You how- told us, we talked about this. He, he yeah. like, absorbs their brain or something? No, or- he, like... He basically like oh is like a chameleon, like whoever he's hanging out with, he tends he to like, like look, talk, and dress like, and but he moves from different social group from to different social group, and it's like a metaphor of how like Jews have had to survive in society. We're all, we're all gonna watch that movie because that's basically because yeah, Kevin, Kevin thinks he's a zealot. A hundred percent, I'm a zealot. You're not a Zelig. You know why you're not a Zelig, Kev? Because not anymore. But I, I had no, to be. No, you're no. all Zeligs. No, we're, we're all Zeligs. Zeligs in some ways. In order no. to a, a Zelig is somebody who who's not confident enough into in in the integrity and the importance of who they actually are that they they they'll go into another group and they'll find out what the consensus is for the proper way to act and think and talk and they become that, that so that they can fit that, in. That's not what. That's not what Kevin does. That's not what John does. That's not what I do. We'll go into other groups and we'll we'll fit in, but we'll force ourselves mm. to fit in. You know, what, you, you know to... Josh, this is good. You tend to, that is like the more optimistic read on it. And it also is the more like being on the side of the character, like being on the side of Kevin or being on the side of, cause like that, you, what you said is like, it celebrates like the good aspects. I was thinking of like, when you said that, because I feel like I had to zelig at my job. Like I had to pretend like I was fit in that world to get Stop it. What's hilarious is that you did nothing to fit into that job. Exactly. That's, the, <laughs> see, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's, you did you, you just defined. You, you, just that, defined. you did almost, at, Josh, he did everything he could do to be teetering on getting fired every week. It was, yeah, it was every week he'll come to me. He'll be like, he'll say something. He'll be like, he'll say something and I want to defend because I want to defend him. I'm like, yo, they're wrong. But then he'll say something like, you know what? In an office, maybe you shouldn't say that. Honestly, the most unfortunate of the three of us who the most zealot is, is me because I have this job where I have to become like businessman Josh. You know, I had to fucking zealot today. But the problem is we all, and it's not a problem, it's a good thing. We all have a very, very, very strong character and a very strong opinion of the world. And even as good as I am at acting and pretending to be a businessman, who I am still bleeds into throughout my day. So when like when someone crosses me, I become like a fucking lunatic <laughs> and say crazy things, you know, like that's my point is, you know, I think we are so big and true and loud of a character and worthy of who we've decided to play because everybody plays a role that I don't see at least the three of us zeliging in any situation. That is so great. Uh, To close the episode, uh, I just want to say that one of the things that I found out about Ryan and Maria Rilke from, from doing a little research on him is that despite being like a super lonely sort of, you know, goth almost dude? Mm-hmm. No, don't call him a goth. You don't think he's a goth? Goths are fucking like depressed fucking like, they're lonely in their loneliness. This dude was happy in his loneliness. Yeah, you're right. Or, or you're right. trying to find the happiness. In his loneliness. But I feel like he would almost kind of, I don't know how he dressed, but I think he would kind of like be... They so all dressed like thing. goth. It was a hundred years ago. Yeah, it was a hundred years ago. Everything was goth back then. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Or steampunk but, or whatever the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> he was steampunk. That's what he is. He was a steampunk. <laughs> yeah, dude. That is cool. That is great. No, but he actually I found out that he actually did fuck. Ah. Yeah. You know, you gotta fuck, man. Fucking is really good. I really hope 
Um, Wait, like prostitutes or or no? Like, oh, he he like hey he fucked dude. Oh. I really hope for Hanukkah. He was Mac. He would this, actually this I haven't had sex in many months now. Mm. Yeah, you know for oh. uh, you know me I too. <laughs> huh? Me too. I, I that's what I'm, I want to say that I I'm Kevin has had plenty of sex. He's been having sex for days and days. Sex. I yes. hope uh, that the three of us get some good. Healthy, optimistic, um, lonely but not lonely sex. Mm. Amen, uh, guys. We've been looking after dark. 